Hello there everybody, I'm Mark the Cyborg and today some astonishingly large news happened today when Microsoft bought Activision Blizzard not too long after they bought Bethesda, which means, I don't know, uh, Microsoft's basically like the Pac-Man of the video game industry, I mean, other than the actual Pac-Man, he, he is a video game character. This isn't a totally good thing, nor is it a totally bad thing, but there's a few key points we need to look at. First and most notably, I think it's pretty easy to say that Activision Blizzard has probably needed a change in leadership for quite some time now, and I'm not just talking about the allegations of professional impropriety, those are a little bit weird, mostly in regards to how they've been handling their developers. Pretty much every single developer that works for Activision Blizzard has been shunted away from whatever projects they were working on to help support Call of Duty games, be it making new maps, new modes like campaigns for the annual releases, or most notably just supporting Warzone across the board. And that's fine to an extent, Call of Duty is a big revenue generator, but I can't help but feel like a lot of those teams could have been making awesome games that people who aren't Call of Duty players could be enjoying, but because of the gravy train that is Call of Duty, they, they just tend to all work there. Uh, most notably for me at least, Raven Software, who made some great games like Singularity and Jedi Outcast, uh, Quake 4, uh, have just been making Call of Duty stuff for almost a decade now, and, and I, I'm kind of happy that they may be freed up to do something else. Although, I mean, they all it's too early to tell, they might still be just working on Call of Duty. But there's also companies like Toys for Bob and Beanox and uh, Vicarious Visions, if they can get reformed into Vicarious Visions again, because they recently got roped into Blizzard to help with Diablo 2 Resurrected. It, it's basically all Activision has been doing over the last few years is figuring out which of their franchises make the most money and then taking all of their teams and making them make spin-offs and maps for those franchises and it's kind of a creative black hole so I, I'm happy that we might see some changes there. The most notable benefit for Game Pass subscribers is that Game Pass is going to become totally insane now. I never thought we'd live in a world where $10 a month will get you access to the newest Halo game, the newest Doom game, the newest Call of Duty game, the newest Starcraft game, the newest Warcraft game. Like it's actually kind of nuts and that's without even factoring in stuff like the Elder Scrolls that they'll have. Like it just it, Game Pass as a value proposition is kind of becoming ludicrous and I think as it stands right now even if you own an Xbox or a PC and aren't specifically dedicated to one franchise or one game and want to experience a whole bunch of different games, a Game Pass subscription is an absolute no-brainer. Finally, another really good point, at least from my perspective, is that if Activision was up for purchase, they did not get purchased by Tencent, which is a win for anybody who loves freedom, because Tencent has been buying a lot of companies lately. They already owned, I believe, a 4% stake in Activision Blizzard, and most smart money would be if someone said, hey, a big mega corporation is going to buy Activision Blizzard, smart money would probably be on China, so Microsoft, not being a perfect company and probably a bit of a morally dubious company, is still a company that is American, which means that all of those subsidiaries of Activision Blizzard are not going to be owned by the Chinese Communist Party, and at least as far as I'm concerned, that is a win. Now let's get on to the bad. This just flat out sucks for people who are PlayStation gamers, but in particular, it really sucks for casual gamers who game on PlayStation, and especially for those who just bought a PlayStation 5, expecting it to be the place where they can be playing Call of Duty for the next five to seven years. Because I mean, there's been no information about whether or not Call of Duty will become exclusive, but it's in the cards, and there's lots of gamers out there, in fact I'd say the overwhelming majority of the gaming market are people who just buy Call of Duty every year and play it. I am not that type of gamer, I would recommend that nobody become that type of gamer because it's really limiting your exposure to a medium that just has so much incredible stuff. But ultimately, if Call of Duty is what you like and that's what you want to play every year, that's cool, like, I mean, you can like whatever you like for whatever reason you like it, and it sucks that you may have just bought a $500 piece of hardware that is now useless to you or will be useless to you in a year. I think there's a solid bet that they will keep Warzone multi-platform because 
it's just a, a gigantic revenue generator, but I think that there is a, a, a strong possibility that the mainline Call of Duty games, so the ones with a campaign and just a standard multiplayer mode, will probably end up being Microsoft exclusive. If not now, I'd say almost certainly in the next five years or over the next console generation. Now, that being said, I think with Microsoft's umbrella of finances that they can do to not have to be banking on one specific game to sell gangbusters every year, we might see the end of annual Call of Duty releases, which I think will be a benefit to the health of the multiplayer servers of those games, as well as the quality of the campaigns, because I, I really think that the, my biggest complaint about most Call of Duty campaigns that I've played in the last 10 years is it seems like it was a game that could have been great if they took a little bit more time on it, but they had to crank it out for that November release date, and they always seem a little undercooked and, and rushed. And I mean, they're over in like five hours. Secondly, more centralization is rarely a good thing. Like, I think that it's easy to say, oh man, I play on Xbox, so it's awesome that Microsoft's buying all these things, but Ultimately, you'd still be getting most, if not all, Activision Blizzard games if they were third party. It's just now PlayStation players can't get them, so I, I don't know. And I think that Microsoft is very quickly becoming the Disney of the video game industry. And I mean, well, we've, we've seen what Disney has been doing with Star Wars and it looks like now Marvel. So I, I don't think you'll be able to find me amongst the people who says that that's an awesome thing to be happening. At the same time, it's hard to really tell what a centralized video game industry, or at least a good chunk of the industry being centralized, actually means. So it's difficult to really to really say what the negative effects will be. With Disney, it's pretty easy to say because their family-friendly, milquetoast nature has had them kind of even everything down so that nothing can possibly have an edge. I mean, the Moon Knight trailer came out, I hope it turns out good, but I have a feeling it's going to seem like Marvel Netflix light at best. And, I mean, prove me wrong, Oscar Isaac. I think you're a good actor. Finally, the biggest downside is that crossplay was finally becoming a thing. Like, it was it was to the point that you could almost expect a cross-platform multiplayer game to come out and have cross-platform play. So that if you were on PlayStation, you could play with your friends on Xbox and PC. Everyone could play together. It didn't matter which plastic box anyone had. And it was getting to be a very good thing. But now with uh, Microsoft taking the publisher of Call of Duty, one of the biggest and most successful cross-platform games, I guess outside of Fortnite, it's probably pretty likely that PlayStation will be cut out of that equation, and which means that if me on PC were to want to play with some of my friends, it's it's going to be more difficult if they're on PlayStation, and, and that's not a good thing for anybody. We're so close to the cross-play future, and I hope we get there again, but more exclusives to specific platforms it undoubtedly means, as a secondary side effect, fewer games that are cross-platform across all platforms, if that makes sense. Finally, the ugly. I guarantee you we are about to see a storm of just Galaxy Brain takes coming from the PlayStation fanboy YouTubers. I'm not going to call any of them out here because I don't want any of them getting harassed. But the upside to that is it will result in some pretty funny schadenfreude. And I'm sure that people like Griffin Gaming or Fritanga or even our man Papa Gundam are going to be making some hilarious responses to their videos. So, I don't know, there might be an upside there. And uh, the other ugly thing is, I guess, kind of a, a personal perspective. I, I'm primarily a PC gamer, so, I mean, this is, it's kind of a win for me because it means that for all these games, I'm not going to have to worry about using Battle.net. There's going to be day one Steam launches for all these games where if, say, Sony had bought Activision, it would almost guarantee that I'd have to wait three years to maybe play one of these games. Although, I got to say, God of War on PC, chef's kiss. That being said, it is a bit bittersweet because my ideal world is not one where every single game comes out on the platform I play. My ideal world is one where there isn't exclusivity and you can just play games on whichever platform you want to play them on. So a big chunk of gamers getting a whole publisher's worth of games taken away from them kind of sucks and I, I don't really look at it as a good thing. So subjectively for me, it's an upside because day one Steam releases, but I can objectively see that overall it's kind of a bad thing. 
But that's my perspective on it, and I'd absolutely love to hear your perspective on it. I've kind of got a reputation for answering every comment, so maybe this time I'll ignore all of you. I'm just kidding, but um, good to see you guys again. I'm Mark the Cyborg, and this is Gaming with Geeks.